story begins. This is the setting, farms and forests. Here is one of our characters, a farmer who makes his living not only from the land, but also from the forest. Wood is important here. The homes are all made of wood. These are ordinary people in a peaceful community. Their daily life is linked to your daily life in a chain essential to them, important to you. The first link in the chain is the forest. During summer, the people work on the farms. Winter comes, the river is frozen, the fields are covered with snow. And the farmer takes up his second occupation. With his horse and sled, he goes to the forest. of the men who work here own this particular forest, or part of it, usually as partners. Winter offers the best means of conveyance. Horse pull timber logs are carried down the snow roads. To be piled on a river bank or placed on a frozen lake, we close the first link of the chain between the forest and you. of spring, we open the second link. The timber comes down from river banks. Logs are afloat on the lake, carried by the stream, pushed by the log drivers. Hurled down the flume.
from everywhere into the river. The river carries the logs further and further towards their destination, slower and slower towards the sea. In the coastal waters now, the logs are being sorted. Who owns this one? His mark is on the log. What kind of wood is this? For the sawmill or the pulp factory? Now the chain extends with numerous links. Here is one. The sawmill making planks and boards. Planks and boards for houses. Some of the logs take a bypath and become telegraph poles. Many logs take a new road, become plywood, anything from furniture to airplanes. A basic and important link in the chain, the pulp factory. cut to pieces. It is boiled with chemicals. Result, the substance called pulp, raw material for numerous products. With pulp is added a dozen new links to our chain. The most well-known, popular, loved, and feared is paper. Following the chain, we enter a new world, the world of trade and finance. It means useful products all over the world. It means the consumer. It means you. To the workers in factories, to the log drivers and forest workers, it means a living. And when our farmer gets money in return for wood, the chain is closed between the wall streets of the world and the forests of the earth. The chain may be broken if any link becomes weak. The forests are the very first link they are part of the world, and there seems to be enough wood. In time of crisis, when trade is paralyzed, people even say, there is too much wood. But is there? In many parts of the world, the forests have been ruthlessly overcut, robbed without a thought of the future. Is there too much wood? When the forests disappear, nature strikes back with destruction. The waters rise, rivers flood the land, drowning thousands of people, leaving millions homeless. disappear, the soil erodes. The cover of earth for the plow to work in gets thinner and thinner. Nature strikes back. 
we return to the first link for a closer inspection. Timber is green gold, yes, but the forest is not a gold mine. Trees have to grow. How long did it take nature to grow this tree? 70 years. It didn't take 70 seconds to cut it down. The trees of the forest are a crop. In order to have a crop, you must sow seeds. As it is in agriculture, so it is in forestry. But in forestry, when you plant the trees this year, you can't expect a harvest until the beginning of the next century. That is, we harvest all the time, but only part of the crop. Very carefully, we choose which trees are to be cut and how many. If we don't, there will be less and less in the future. If we want more timber, we must learn to grow more trees and grow them faster. Science can tell a story about that. This tree proved to be a fine specimen when the scientist took a sample out of it. It had been growing faster than most of its kind. Its substance was of the finest quality. So the scientist decided there shall be a whole family of trees like this. They built platforms and ladders in order to reach every part of the tree. Then the flowers were covered with paper bags. No pollen seed from other trees could reach the flowers now. A few days later, the scientists carefully injected pollen seed from the tree itself into each paper bag. Then they carefully covered the hole and left the tree alone for some time, letting nature do the job herself. Months later, the fruits could be reaped, the new seed ready to be sown. Carefully, we sow the seed, distribute it evenly. Each plant must have the same opportunities from the start. Later, the difference will show. The plants are born equal, but are not equally good. After two years of sorting and growing, the best plants, only the best, are selected and transplanted on the experimental field, an area of forest land especially fertile. The measures are exact, 150 centimeters between each tree. In another 40 to 50 years, the best individuals will have grown into tall, beautiful trees. The seeds from the best of them will be used in the creation of the new forests of the future, 100 years hence. So we protect the forest we have against pests and insects. Air operations against the weasels. With constant lookout for forest fires, we protect our wealth. Pests can be fought. Fires put out, but war, war is destruction always. For the forest wealth of the nations, the Second World War meant threefold destruction. Fighting destroyed the forests. War economy robbed the forests through overcutting. Cities, factories, and houses were destroyed. 20 million houses. We need timber to build new cities, factories, houses. We need it badly, and we need it now. But how do we get it when the forests are in poor condition and the demand is at its height? The time has come to solve this problem through international cooperation. The Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations began with the Timber Conference in 1947. Said the Director General of FAO, this conference is the first of a series of actions that will be worldwide. A lasting solution can only come through worldwide cooperation. In order to do something about the shortage of timber now, the conference asked the member countries to cut 10% more wood in 1948. 
This has largely been done and has helped in building many new houses and factories. But we know this is only an immediate aid. The time has come to make a plan for the future, a world plan. How much wood is there in the world? One-fifth of the land surface of the earth is covered with forests. The forests grow in belts according to the difference of climate. In the north temperate belts, softwoods grow more abundantly than hardwoods. A trip around the world beginning with the highly developed forests of Scandinavia will lead you first through other cultivated forest areas. Finland and western part of the Soviet Union, then into the wild and virgin forests of Siberia. Enormous resources, many yet unexplored. The forest belt is broken by the Pacific Ocean, but continues on the American continent. In the Canadian West, big timber production. United States of America with large forests, but still larger forests are destroyed by ruthless methods. The trip takes you south to the tropical belts. South America, the Amazon, virgin forests, primitive people, gigantic resources as yet unmeasured, unused. Tropical timber is difficult to get hold of, difficult to move out of the wilderness. Africa, the dark continent still has forest wealth. With much toil, the precious hardwoods are brought to the sea. Interrupted by oceans, the forest belt stretches east. We meet it again in Burma, in Siam, in the East Indies. Elephants handle the teak. Natives cut their way in far off jungles and come upon giants of tropical trees, symbols of the unexplored, unused forest wealth of the earth. The trip takes us back to the starting point, cultivated forests in the old civilization. The time has come to make it clear that these resources can be made useful to mankind only through worldwide cooperation. No one can hope to take this for himself. The time has come when advanced countries need to unite with backward nations and help them develop their resources carry out projects like the FAO report on Greece, a country disastrously devoid of forests. Help with seeds and plants, help with experts' advice. It is no easy thing to create a forest here. The soil is eroded, water is scarce. It will take time, but the time has come. Let modern technique pave the way. Let it penetrate deep into the forests and make them useful. Mechanical equipment can overcome many obstacles of nature. Let machine power help manpower cut the trees. The job is hard enough anyway. Let machine power carry the timber. Combine technique with resources for the benefit of all. It is a hard job anyway. See to it that workers in forests, often far away from civilization, have a decent living. Take care of the health of those who work in the factories. Wood is a raw material with possibilities undreamt of for building houses, making textiles, fuel, and many things yet undiscovered. Share the knowledge, combine research, make new results available. Some countries have achieved much alone, but through cooperation can achieve much more. Combine, cooperate, unite. It is the only hope.
if we don't cooperate, if we don't, progress shall be frustrated. We shall have crisis upon crisis. We shall starve. We shall have war. And the human race shall not survive. Combine, cooperate, unite. It is the only chance. So there is hope for the future. Because all over the world, in all communities, people have always been able to cooperate. We began our story in a small community of forest farmers. When we return to them, it is with hope. Following an ancient custom, they celebrate the coming of spring. The bonfires light the hope in our hearts. What we celebrate is not the future, but our hopes. If we join in efforts like we join in hope, we shall succeed. <laughs>